Support for this episode and my channel is provided by Technor Apex, maker of the Zero-G hose, the hose that takes the work out of yard work. This is the white oak board that I'll be using for the legs. You can see it's got a pretty big knot and I'm going to end up filling that with sawdust and epoxy. But to get started on the legs, I'm going to cut this board in half and that will make the material much lighter, safer, and easier to handle as I'm pushing it through the jointer and the table saw. After running the boards through the jointer, I'll use the table saw to mill the legs a little heavier than an inch and three quarters square. Next I'll run the legs through the drum sander taking a little off each side and removing the blade marks left by the table saw. Then I'll use the miter saw to square up one side of each leg. Then measure and mark, set up a stop block and cut all the legs to size. Now that I have the legs milled and cut to length, I'll get to work on the face frames. And for the face frames, I'm using poplar wood. Poplar is a great choice for painted projects. It has a nice tight grain, very few knots. It's readily available and fairly inexpensive. Again, I'm going to start by cutting the boards to a rough length. Then over at the table saw, I'll rip the boards to width, then set up a stop block and cut all the parts to their finished length. Now I have all the face frame parts cut to width and length, and I'm ready to build the face frames using pocket hole joints. A face frame is basically made up of two parts. You have rails. Rails are the horizontal parts. And then you have styles, and styles are the vertical parts. For the front of this cabinet, I'm going to have two equal shelves. And so I'll take one of the styles, and I'll measure it, and then find the center. And this is 25 and 3 quarters, so the center is 12 and 7 eighths. And since the rails that I'm using are an inch and a half, I'll measure 3 quarters on each side of the mark I made in the center. And when I build the face frame, I'll keep the rail in between those marks. And now I'll transfer those marks onto the other style by holding the styles flush and then just transferring the mark from one style to the next. After building the face frames, I'll drill pocket holes in the sides of the face frames so I can attach the face frames to the legs with pocket hole screws. Before I can move any further with the project, I'm going to have to fill that knot hole. And this is the West System Epoxy. West System Hardener turns red as it gets older, so that's why you're seeing that darker color. And that's okay for wood fill because it usually lends itself to a, a good wood fill color. The sawdust is from my belt sander. It's a very fine sawdust. And I'll make a vessel using the painter's tape, fill the knot hole, let it dry overnight, and then shape it, in this case, using the table saw and a little sandpaper.
I'll use a piece of quarter inch plywood to make a pattern for the legs and I'll start by measuring up three inches and then I'll measure over seven eighths of an inch and put a line or make a mark and then I'll connect those lines and cut that out on the bandsaw. Now that I have the pattern, I'll trace it on the legs and I'm making sure the legs with the nicest grain are in the front of the cabinet and facing out. I'm attaching the face frame to the leg with pocket hole screws and now I'm using a piece of half inch MDF to establish a reveal at the back of the leg. I've got the face frame clamped in position and I'll hold the piece of half inch MDF and make sure that I'm flush with the back of the leg and I'll attach the face frame with fine threaded pocket hole screws designed to be used with hardwoods. Notice that I'm assembling the cabinet upside down on a clean, smooth surface. This makes it really easy to keep the top of the face frames flush with the top of the legs as I'm assembling the cabinet. Now that I have the cabinet assembled, I can add the flat panels to the sides of the cabinet and since the cabinet is open, I'm using beadboard for the back and I posted a video over the weekend on how to make this beadboard using the table saw and a hand plane and I'll have a link to that video in the description and it will also be part of the playlist for this project. What I'm going to do next is create a channel in the center of the beadboard and at the bottom where the shelves hit the back of the cabinet. Here I'm using a 3 quarter inch straight bit along with a guide to cut a dado in the back. I used a lap joint to add a piece to the bottom of the back simply because the piece that I had wasn't big enough and this was faster than running out to the lumber yard. But just keep in mind, the plans will only call for a second dado at the bottom of the back and the measurements will be provided. I'll attach the panels to the inside of the cabinet with wood glue and 18 gauge 1 inch long nails in the nail gun. Okay, well now that I've got the beadboard installed in the back of the cabinet and the flat panels are installed on the sides of the cabinet, I'm going to use a bead molding router bit in the router to make bead molding and I'll trim out the front of the cabinet. I'm using a 5 quarter by 8 poplar board to make the molding and this will allow me to get two pieces of molding from each side. After using the router to cut the molding profile, I'll use the table saw to cut the molding to width.
Next, after making several lengths of molding, going back and forth between the router and the table saw, I'll readjust the fence and resaw the molding to size. Now that I have the bead molding attached to the face frame, I'll cut the two shelves to size. For the shelves, I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood. I'll start by ripping the shelves to width, then use the crosscut sled and cut the shelves to length. Next, I'll use the table saw to rip poplar cleats to support the shelves. I've replaced the bead molding router bit with a cove bit, and I'll put a slight cove in the cleats that will support the shelves. The cleats that will support the shelves will be attached to the back of the face frame first and to find the location of where I'm attaching the cleat, I'm using a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. This is the same plywood that I'm using for the shelving. And I'll hold the piece of plywood flush with the face frame. And then I'll trace a line on the back. I'm using another piece of scrap plywood to hold on top of the cleat as I nail the cleat in place making sure that I remain flush with the top of the face frame. Now I'm holding the cutoff from the shelf and I'll slide it down the side of the cabinet until it hits the cleat that I just attached to the face frame and draw a pencil line tracing the bottom. Now I've squared across and I'll attach the next cleat at that line. Now I can use a larger framing square and I'll drop that down just until it hits that cleat and trace it on the back. I've added a bead of wood glue to the top of the cleat and now I'll drop the shelf in place. Okay, well that is as far as I'm going to get for now. I hope that you'll tune in next time when I trim up the flat panels, make the solid white oak top, and add the white oak bead molding to the bottom, and get this thing painted and finished. I think it's going to look great, and I'll have that video up by Friday, and 